Hello, this is Cathy, the RC Mummy, and we are back again with our 365 day challenge with the 365 days of art, a creative exercise for every day of the year by Lorna Scobie. And our prompt for today, day 19, is design a wallpaper behind this chair. So today I'm going to teach you how to create a repeating pattern and um, what we're going to need is some tracing paper a set square or ruler or something of the kind a soft lead pencil or charcoal pencil or something similar that um, transfers easily when you touch it and we're also going to need our standard watercolour set which will be um, just a pan set of water watercolours, a small round brush and some water. So the first thing we're going to do is cut a, you can use scissors too if you like, but to cut a piece of paper about the same size as our page and I'm just going to do it this way and so I press down hard on the edge and pull firmly upwards and one easy way to cut paper or tracing paper or anything else if you need to have some the right size and you don't have any scissors. By the way I do have scissors, I just, aren't these cute? I just um, wanted to show you guys that little trick in case you didn't know it. Alright, so now I have a couple of old DVDs that I pop under this side until it can sit flat like the other side. And this is going to be our wallpaper pattern maker. So I think I was thinking of going on a vertical pattern. There's more room to do a horizontal, but we'll go vertical. So all I'm going to do is just pick a size and a good way to figure that you've got your paper straight if you don't feel like measuring is to line it up exactly with the end there and just let it follow, fold, it, make its own crease. You'll have a perfectly straight fold. As long as you've got a straight edge to start with. And then we're going to carefully go the other direction. Make sure it lines up on the end. Do that bit first and then all the way along. And we're just going to make like a like a fan out of it. Now, truthfully, we don't actually need all of this, but you can. recreate your pattern all the way if you want to. Oh, The other thing you're going to need is a piece of scrap paper. So the first thing we're going to do is design a pattern. So I was thinking something a little bit um, curly. Something that would probably be difficult to repeat accurately that'll do now you might choose to take as many goes at this as you like to get um, something that you're happy with 
and I'm just going to fold that over in half and then I'm going to give it a good rub. And what will happen is we have an exact copy over here. So then all I have to do is trace over it. We should be doing this over here for you. have an exact copy of your pattern and then I might just go something like that right in the middle once again I want to be exactly the same so fold him over Give him a good rub. And there's our exact copy. Oops. To trace. Then I'm gonna go this way. Fold it exactly on the line that we've already made. trace over it again and this time we're going to do the whole thing So what I did here is not, not a good thing. You want to try and be as accurate as you can. Especially if your pattern's a little bit more complicated. I'm keeping this pretty simple. And then we've got our pattern transferred to this one. So now once again trace over The more accurate your tracing, the more accurate your pattern will be. There we have it, one lovely vertical wallpaper pattern. Just going to grab another piece of this.
just to protect my paper. We've already got fish going, coming through it, so we don't really want to have anything else. So now because we've got them on different sides because of the way we folded it to get the, um, the carbon copy, we need to get some transferable charcoal onto one side of the tracing paper and make sure that there's enough of it to transfer to our paper. having small children and medium sized children and large children it is very rare for me to be able to find a ruler, a sharpener um, or even a decent pencil most of the time unless it's one of these that they know that they're, they're not allowed to be touching at all um, it would help you if you had a much sharper pencil than what I'm currently working with but we work with what we've got and oh, this is going to be just fine for me. It also depends on how complicated your picture is too that you're wanting to um, make a wallpaper type pattern out of a repeating pattern. going to trace that completely all the way top to bottom on both sides with something underneath to protect your paper. Okay, this is where the magic happens now. So we're going to take this where we've drawn on both of them on this side. And we're going to pop it down. You know, I'm a big doofus because I made it too, too tall because I forgot they put the floor there. So never mind, we'll go... I'm just going to line up that straight edge with the edge of the book and I'm going to place it right there and then start tracing again. Oh, I nearly forgot. A very, very good thing to do if you're tracing anything right. is to create a registration mark. You put that in two places, just like that, so you draw on your page and then onto your tracing paper. And you exactly line them up. So 
so that if for any reason you want to move your paper or you walk away and somebody takes it off completely even if you've taped it like kids you can, you can always get it exactly where it belongs so we go down this one as well and I can't express enough how important it is that you try to be accurate in your tracing each time you do um, repeat your pattern it's going to be harder to follow if you don't Now there is a point to um, to carefully tracing this rather than scribbling over it or rubbing over it like a lot of people would have you do when you're tra transferring on tracing paper. And that's because what we've done now is put down a fresh set of um, charcoal for the next piece. So I'm just going to guesstimate for the purposes of this. How far apart I want them to be. I haven't bothered with registration marks on this one because I know that I'm not going to walk away from it until I've done this section, so it's okay. Being lazy, really. As long as you're fairly accurate with your marks, you could go on forever like this because you're laying down a fresh layer of charcoal on the top and the underside is transferring and then if you want to repeat it, you just turn it over, rinse and repeat and you can repeat the same pattern without sort of running out of charcoal or pencil or graphite or or chalk indefinitely. And there we have that. And now I'll do a vertical line. All right, so I should be measuring this. But I'm just, oh, be careful of that too. Um, smudging, no fun. Okay, and there I have my pattern. Okay, so this is my very, very messy palette. So I'm going to get some um, yellow ochre. A touch of red. 
try and get a nice sort of warm orangey brown going on hopefully. That's not bad. And now to paint it in. This is the hard part because I don't want to smudge what I've got down there. Possibly would have had more success with the markers. They say choose the right tool for the right job. But I did want to do this with paint, so there we have it. So now I'm just going to paint this in nice and quick so that you don't have to be bored. And um, again, this is a really good exercise in brush control and getting even getting even consistent lines where and how you want them to be so um, nice practice there so now that that bit's done we're just going to mix up a pretty lime green and paint in the stripes a bit of a grandma's kitchen or oldie weldy look to it but, um, that method of, of using the tracing paper and folding it to create your um, your pattern and reproduce it over and over again you can get do that as many times as you like as long as you're really careful with um, being accurate on your lines because each time you retrace over the old lines the less accurate you are the harder it's going to be to re reproduce again and again so nice sharp pencil and um, and a careful hand if you're doing this in a serious way. And now I'm just mixing up a little bit of very light, well watered down pink paint. That's a little bit too much. That's better because pink and green is pretty. And I wanted it to be a, a kind of a girly, pretty wallpaper. And then just make, mixing up a very dark brown by adding black to the colour that I already have. And then I'm going to just retrace all around the, um, the original pattern that we made on the tracing paper. And place a little dot in the middle of the, each of the, the little ball things. Not sure what they're called. And... Um, That'll just help to give it more definition and also to fix up any places a bit that I um, I wasn't as happy with. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to go back to my dark brown again and solidify the line that I did with the ruler earlier. And again, this is a really good opportunity to just practice without having to stress because it's not a finished piece um, or, or a masterpiece or anything that you're necessarily going to exhibit or uh, even have to show even members of your own family if you don't want to um, where you can practice things like um, having a straight and consistent line And somebody says, oh no, I can't paint, I can't draw, I can't even draw a straight line. Well, not that many people actually can. Not without a great deal of practice. Straight lines and perfect circles are almost impossible for the human hand to do unless it's been rigorously trained. So, don't beat yourself up. Practice. 
very calm color scheme here. Brown, pink and green. Oh, I like it. Just let that dry. And the lovely thing about that charcoal, now do test before you use your own, is that there's now no traces of it really on my page. I can just wipe it off, which is why I had to be careful about not smudging it too much. But um, do you like my pattern? I know it's a bit rough, but it's a um, it's not a bad design, I think, for a, um, maybe an illustration or something. Not sure if I'd have it in my house. But anyway, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, hit notification bells, do all the wonderful, wonderful things, and um, happy painting. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.